A warm welcome to the 39th DASC conference. All of us at Performance Software wish you well. Today, Mike and I would like to explore the next generation of digital mapping and how it applies to aircraft navigation in the future of piloted and autonomous air travel. Four-dimensional digital mapping is a necessity and effectively allows pilots and avionics systems to see in the dark or in the fog. My name is Julian Thompson. I am one of the business leaders at Performance Software and the product manager for our Precision Navigation product line. Thank you, Julian. My name is Mike Karolevich. I am the Geographic Information Systems Technology Leader at Performance Software. I've been working in transportation navigation databases for the last eight years. In this presentation, I would like to share with you how I think terrains can be used in flight today and how they can be optimized with autonomous flight in the near future. Let's get started. Here's what we'll cover today. A little background on who we are, attention to three-dimensional spatial accuracy, adding the fourth dimension of real-time map updates, putting digital maps to work, and finishing up with a brief summary. Of course, we have much more detail on the technology and its benefits in our companion paper. A little bit about performance software. At performance software, over the past eight years, we have created core technology, tools and processes to develop the highest precision digital maps in use in today's avionics systems. Our technical contribution to the industry includes precision airport maps, navigation data, associated imagery and terrain, and three-dimensional rendering engines. As we highlight in the next slide, we also take globalization of data very seriously. The dots on the map show the global coverage of sub-meter precision digital airport maps available today, bringing next generation taxi guidance systems to life. Augmenting airport mapping is global A424 navigation data, providing high precision data for airport approaches and departures, allowing digital mapping to extend out from the airport itself to enable autonomous landing and takeoff. We will explore both of these areas in our session together today. It's a digital world right enough. Diving into the technology. Fundamentally, the ever increasing accuracy of GPS technology, which answers the key question, where am I? Is driving the need for ever increasing accuracy of associated maps, answering the other key questions, what's around me? And where are they? Whether you're a pilot, an air traffic controller, or the processor in an autonomous aircraft, you have to have those answers. Three-dimensional spatial accuracy. Let's focus on an airport landing and leave vertical heliport landing for later. How do we get an aircraft all the way to the gate without pilot intervention? in a dense fog. En route, GPS defines the own ship location. The autopilot, AP, maintains a course based on a flight management system, FMS, flight plan, and the own ship position. The pilot can also visualize the trajectory superimposed on low precision electronic charts. The traffic collision avoidance system, TCAS, takes care of determining what is around you and to recommend evasive action as necessary. High precision digital maps are not overly valuable in this phase of flight, except we're dry running an approach, landing and taxi well ahead of descent can provide pilots who are new to an airport with a higher confidence level on approach. As we transition into the approach phase of flight, a whole new set of systems kick in. Instrument landing systems, ILS, 
consisting of radio and light array technology, ensures that the aircraft is lined up center and on the correct glide slope. Augmenting the ILS is ground proximity radar, GPR, determining the altitude above ground, twinned with atmospheric altitude data. As Mike will show later, augmenting this single ILS approach system with an approach augmentation system, an AAS, based on precision digital maps, would provide a fail-safe backup to the primary ILS and enable lower minimum approach abort altitudes during bad weather. As we come into land, many new digital map enabled technology systems can ensure safer landing. There is substantial research and investment into aircraft auto landing through visual observations of runway center lines, edge lines, think Tesla. These visual recognition systems, VRS, can be compromised, however, under severe weather conditions. Where precision digital maps play a key part in landing, both on airport and in vertical lift applications, is the ability to visually identify features, index them into a digital map, and output the aircraft's location and surroundings independent of GPS technology. These maps form the basis of Visual Location Systems, VLS. For crewed aircraft, digital mapping is the basis for accurate synthetic vision systems, SVS, to provide robust situational awareness for the crew and exciting infotainment for passengers. Finally, ADSB technology as now mandated, coupled with the display of surrounding air and ground transport vehicles overlaid onto precision digital maps becomes the basis for TCAS on the ground. So we've rolled to a stop and pulled off on a taxi intersection. Visibility is zero, and you're awaiting ground clearance instructions over a noisy VHF radio link by a thick accented controller, and you're told to wait for a pilot truck to arrive and escort you to the gate. Think massive delays and really annoyed passengers. Or, with a controlled tower and aircraft equipped with the Controller Pilot Data Link System, CPDLC. The controller immediately downloads ground instructions on how to get to your gate directly into the aircraft's taxi guidance system, TGS, itself built on top of precision digital maps. Immediately, the route is calculated and displayed on the map. The pilot can then navigate safely to the desired gate or a UAV can control its nose wheel and throttle to get to its parking stand. With ADSB augmenting the display or the autonomous vehicle digital map memory, other surrounding aircraft and ground transportation vehicles are mapped, enabling ground collision avoidance algorithms to fire up. Hey presto, at the gate, in a pea soup fog, safely, with no delay. Please take a moment to experience the following research prototype of a taxi guidance system that we have recently developed. Initially developed for pilots to efficiently record ground clearance instructions over VHF radio, to plot the route and track their progress to the gate. The system is also enabled to receive CPDLC messages in the future to automatically create an end-to-end -end route to the ground destination. Ultimately, such taxi guidance systems applications will control the nose wheel and throttles for hands-free taxiing to the gate, all enabled through precision digital maps. During approach, the pilot has received runway clearance instructions from the controller. In this case, the pilot is cleared to land on runway 7 right, with the final destination being Concourse Bravo, Gate 10. This initial data selection now defines the possible taxi options 
to declutter the user interface, readying the pilot for taxi instructions. The application displays the probable next steps in routes leading to gate B10. This declutters the options available to the pilot. While listening to the controller, the pilot taps Taxiway Foxtrot, Intersection Foxtrot 13, and hold at runway 25 right. The application then displays the selected route, enabling the pilot to confirm the route quickly and easily back to the controller. The pilot then follows the route to the runway hold. While stopped at the runway crossing, the pilot requests further instructions. At this time, the tool has now dramatically reduced the possible route options available and presents them to the pilot who taps off 25 right, Romeo, Charlie, Mike to get to gate B10. After confirming the route with the controller, the pilot crosses the runway and navigates to gate B10. Thank you for taking a moment to experience our concept of taxi guidance at work. We have covered the importance of precision in the 3D spatial domain. Now, how do we fold in the time dimension dealing with material changes in airport or urban air mobility environments? Changes that happen outside of the standard ARAC 28 day update cycle which frankly, by the time pilots get the data, it is really a 56 day cycle. At Performance, we have tackled this key challenge with another research program, focusing on fusing precision map data with real-time data updates. Well-known examples of real-time data are the notices to airmen or NOTAMs. By creating a cloud-based data repository, immediately accessible to aircraft through the emerging always connected aircraft technology makes this next step possible. Previously, we have shown how an AMDB can help navigate around complex airports, reducing stress and the chance of incursions. We now take those same AMDBs hosted in the cloud and instrument them with the real-time NOTAM data. In this example, we see a fully functional Cedar Rapids Airport, CID, home to one of the world's great avionics companies. Now, here is a real example of a NOTAM that occurred this year impacting Cedar Rapids. The NOTAM is stating that runway 13-31 was closed on May 26th and should remain closed until September 4th. For AMDB in the cloud, after automatically ingesting the NOTAM, changes its runway attributes to closed. A change notification is then sent to subscribing entities, for example, an aircraft taxi guidance system, that a change has occurred. The change can then be pulled into the system for rendering and display. The renderer now displays the live airport map with the closed runway declared in red. This increases situational awareness for pilots, associated safety, and creates solutions that show multiple sources of data interacting and fusing to create further value from the data. Hello again, it's Mike Karolevich, and I'd like to share current data sources that can power the technologies we've seen in this presentation so far. As you can see, sources one through three are inadequate and insufficient to support the needs of the industry due to their accuracy. When we talk to our customers, they want the highest definition airport maps with real-time data updates, which we can support through the cloud. Option four, certified high-precision AMDBs with sub-meter accuracy can increase solutions available. Mapping airports with high accuracy enhances the pilot's situational awareness to a new level since the airfield will be depicted on an EFB or a forward display. This reduces stress and possible user error during difficult taxing periods such as low visibility conditions. 
or nighttime taxiing. In UAM and autonomous flight applications, submeter maps are critical to navigate environments of all kinds and also will help instill passenger confidence. I'd like to visually demonstrate some of the possible error in the previously mentioned sources. On the left, we can see a highly accurate orthorectified image overlaid with runway thresholds taken from a performance software AMDB and publicly available A424 dataset. We can see the error in the A424 dataset is roughly 10 meters. On the right, we overlaid the same thresholds but displayed them on a publicly available chart. We can see the chart is being projected about 20 meters to the south. For the rest of the presentation, I'm going to focus more on terrains to be able to deliver products of tomorrow and also to help create redundancy in the tools used today. The two images on this slide are of the same area of interest, Durango Airport. On the left, we have an image that is easy for us to interpret what is happening. It's a photo overlaid on a terrain or a DEM. This gives it a 3D aspect. It allows us to see depth. It allows us to see where the tops of the mesas are easily. It empowers decision makers by increasing situational awareness. It can do this because of the terrain, which is on the right side of the slide. The terrain accurately maps the elevation of the area, which could be imported or uploaded into a UAM or into a forward display for a machine to be able to read it and also make determinations. I've been speaking of elevation models and terrains generically in this meeting. However, there are two main types. We have digital surface models and digital terrain models. The left picture is representing a digital surface model. This model shows all static objects, regardless if it's ground or if it's anthropogenic or if it's a forest. Any type of obstacle is shown. We can see the buildings in the bottom. Those are hangars at Durango Airport. On the right is an example of a digital terrain model. A digital terrain model is different because it cuts out anything that is not bare earth. It removes those forests, it removes those buildings, and it's going to show you what it thinks the bare earth would look like. This actually helps us map things out very accurately. For an area where you do have a DSM and a DTM, you can take the delta of the two models to automatically generate obstacles. The top left image, machine view, is an example of this. By itself, it doesn't really enable any decision making or any analysis without other context for humans to make sense. On the bottom, the human view, we can see the end of the runway and we can see the buildings and we can see trees. The image on the right is the combined view to help us understand what exactly is this machine view and what is this auto-generated obstacles it's creating. We can see the buildings on the, on the bottom left overlay exactly where the human eye would see it. And we can see the trees along the right side. Here is a profile to the approach of runway three at Durango Airport. This is the ground elevation in MSL. I'm showing this screen and I, I'll show a graph in the very next screen to help us see what does what does this actually look like and how does it make actionable intelligence for a decision maker. In this slide, we can actually see the profile of the ground and we can see that the approach is actually about three and a half kilometers long. You can see the mesa for the airport is actually even higher elevation of where the airport is, making this a little bit dang more dangerous than most approaches. So why does ground profile matter? Hopefully this chart will illustrate some of the reasons and uses for the data. On the bottom, we see the orange line, which is the ground elevation. On the right side of the chart is the start of the runway. 
the further you go left, the further away from the runway you are. The gray bar represents the threshold crossing height, which is another word for the altitude the pilot would want to be at when he reaches the runway. And the yellow bar demonstrates a three degree approach. So as we look at this, we automatically see if the pilot was ever at the threshold crossing height before he was at the runway, he'd be in danger of hitting that other mesa on the left side of the chart. This matters a lot. Durango Airport actually has commercial airliners go in and out every day, but it doesn't have a control tower, meaning the pilots are more on their own. For pilots flying an IMC, or just bad weather, they're going to rely on instrument flight rules rather than using visual cues of where the ground is. Compound this with areas of low radar coverage, and we can see why precise and accurate data is needed. This data will also be needed for UAMs to create approaches on the fly or to determine the safest place to put down in emergency situations. By knowing where the ground is and where obstacles are, both pilots and autonomous vehicles can have safer flights. With the location accuracy of aircraft ever increasing, the need for aircraft to land in all conditions, and the criticality of digital maps in autonomous aircraft memory, the time is now for high precision submeter digital maps to enable this navigation of the future. Please reach out to us if our technology has captured your interest and imagination on how we can all make our world of air travel safer and more efficient than ever. Thank you for watching and listening.